We are celebrating the arrival of the early founders of America who arrived on the Mayflower in 1620. One of my ancestors, George Sewell, came on the Mayflower and was one of the signers of the Mayflower Compact. Another ancestor, John Winthrop, arrived in America just 10 years later. Winthrop had become unhappy with the religious and political policies of King Charles I. In March 1629, he decided to sell his English estate and emigrate to America. In August of that year, he pledged with 11 other Puritan gentlemen to move his family to Massachusetts. He organized a migration of about a thousand people who sailed to Massachusetts in 1630 on 17 ships. Before sailing, Winthrop composed a statement of religious purpose titled A Model of Christian Charity in which he called upon his fellow immigrants to join together in building a Christian commonwealth in America. Also in the document, he explained that the Massachusetts colonists had a special vocation to love and support one another and to obey the Lord's commandments as they followed his injunction to build a city upon a hill. As the governor of Massachusetts, Winthrop promised that if the colonists would serve the Lord faithfully, God would bless their efforts. John Winthrop is just one of thousands of examples of immigrants to this country who came seeking religious freedom. This nation was founded on the principles of Christianity and freedom of religion. Nearly 170 years after John Winthrop came to America, the founding fathers struggled together to create a constitution which could establish the United States of America on firm principles of governance. Delegates from several states were reluctant to sign it because it didn't have a Bill of Rights. James Madison, the prime drafter of the document, promised the reluctant delegates that a Bill of Rights would be added once the Constitution itself was ratified. The Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, were ratified themselves on December 1791. The very first provision of the very first amendment states, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Once again, we see that freedom of religion was a bedrock principle in the founding and governance of this nation. Leaders of this nation, through all generations and at all levels of government, have a responsibility to enact and enforce laws for the protection of all citizens in the free exercise of their religious beliefs. I currently have the privilege of serving as a state senator in Idaho. It was a solemn moment for me when I took the oath of office. I placed my left hand on the Bible, raised my right hand, and swore an allegiance to uphold and sustain the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Idaho. Last year, we added the following words in large capital letters above the speaker's chairs in both the Idaho House and Senate chambers, quote, in God we trust. When the Senate is in session each day, we begin with a spiritual thought, a prayer to God, to guide our actions, and then we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I feel a deep sense of reverence as I repeat the words of the Pledge when we unitedly say, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Each of us, as American citizens, is under a solemn obligation to uphold the Constitution of the United States. We have the blessing of living in a nation where the rule of law prevails and we can enjoy our religious liberties. This is a choice nation above all other nations on this earth. Freedom of religion is contained in the founding documents of the United States of America had not existed to this extent anywhere else in the world. This nation is truly a city on a hill, a beacon of liberty and freedom shining throughout the world. This is a Christian nation founded upon Christian principles. At the same time, we allow the free exercise of all religions. It has been said that all it takes for evil to triumph in the world is for good men and women to do nothing. May each of us be vigilant to protect these freedoms, not just for ourselves, but for generations to come. May we continue to have the freedom to worship the founder of this nation, God, our Heavenly Father. 
is my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.